Hey everyone, welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. It is so great to be with you today as we unpack the gospel for today, which is from Luke. It is the road to Emmaus. It has so much good stuff that I can't wait to unpack with you all. Before we do any of that though, let's begin our time together in prayer. So let us pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, we praise and we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the many gifts and blessings you have given us, most especially the Eucharist. Although it may be hard for us not to be able to receive the Eucharist at this time, Lord, help us to desire the Eucharist ever more in our lives, to, to desire your son Jesus in a very special and intimate way in our lives, that we may never be apart from him. Help us to have a greater reverence for the Eucharist, that we may wait until the day and anticipate the day that we can come to receive your Son Jesus once again in Holy Communion. Lord God, we ask all these things and all the many things, the prayers that we hold in our hearts, we offer them to you this day. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Well, it is the road to Emmaus that we're gonna to explore today. And uh, it, there are so many different parts to it. Uh, it's really gonna be hard to touch on all the important things that happened there, but we're gonna definitely head on a few of them. So first, you know, uh, whenever I read this reading, it kind of reminds me of the first few times I heard it when I was younger. And I'm like, why do these disciples not recognize Jesus? Like they've been following him, walking with him for, for, for a very long time. And yet he appears to them and like, they are just so oblivious to it. I, I like, man, if Jesus appeared to me, I, I would hopefully recognize him, but they don't. And it's always surprised me why. And that finally, you know, I, I've come to recognize, you know what, it's, it's more than them just not recognizing Jesus because they were distracted or, you know, surprised or that they knew he had died but didn't believe that he had rose from the dead. But that Jesus purposely hides himself in a way uh, that they don't recognize him. So the thing is, is that Jesus is his resurrection is far different than any other um, rising from the dead that we see, have seen in the, the Bible before, right? With Lazarus or with Jairus' daughter, right? These are miraculous risings from the dead, but their bodies are not living forever yet, right? They will die again. Or Jesus has risen from the dead in a resurrected way. So that means that it's, it's entirely different, essentially different than any other rising from the dead that we have heard about. And so what this means is that he, Jesus' body, is not limited to time or space. So he can do uh, and be anywhere, right? And so that's certainly how he appears to them. He appears to them not as he looked before when they knew him, and so he just looks like a stranger. And so they they walk on, he joins them, and we know that, you know, we hear that he pretends to not know anything that's going on. So they kind of tell him, uh, hey, this is what's going on. How, why have you not heard about this Jesus dying, right? And so they still have some doubt. We hear that, you know, they're still doubting because they say that we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And meanwhile, it's Sunday, it's the day of his resurrection, and they have already know that um, the women and Peter and John didn't find Jesus in his tomb, but there's still a little doubt there. There's still a little hopeless that Jesus, is, Jesus did not rise from the dead. And so Jesus, you know, is very blunt with them. He's like, you are foolish men, right? You are very foolish for not believing all that the prophets had said. And so he reminds them, because imagine, you're prob they're probably pretty sad. They're probably pretty distracted. They're thinking about all the things that had just transpired over the number of day, over the no past number of days. And so that's where they're thinking. They're not thinking about all of what the prophets have said for the many, many, many hundreds of years before. And so he recounts 
starting from Moses, all the way up, your recounts to them, all the things that have been said about pointing to not just his death, but his rising from the dead, his conquering of death. Although there's, he still doesn't reveal himself to these disciples, he's just expanding upon giving them that hope that maybe this Jesus, the one who they had hoped would live, would rise from the dead and conquer death. Might This might actually be happening. And so they invite him in to have dinner and what does he do, right? He blesses and he takes the bread, blesses it and breaks it, right? Those three very particular words, takes, blesses, breaks. And that's when their eyes are opened to Jesus. Because though those three words are the words that Jesus uses on Holy Thursday, right? On the Last Supper. And so their eyes are opened to who's in front of them. And what happens immediately? He vanishes from their midst. He disappears. But he doesn't leave them, right? It's not, oh, you figured out who I am. See you guys. Bye. I'm out of here. It's, no, I am present with you and what I've just given you the Eucharist, that I am here in your midst, right in the breaking of bread. And so what a wonderful thing that Jesus reveals, not just to the disciples on the walk to Emmaus, but to each of us in our own lives today. That this gospel reading really helps us, or hopefully will help us, Remember that Christ is present in the Eucharist. That when we might feel like we're confused or saddened or unsure about where to go or the direction we should go in, or we feel lost and we seem to have lost our way with our relationship with Christ, that we can reroute ourselves in the breaking of bread in the Eucharist. And that our, our hearts are united with Christ in the breaking of bread. That yes, you know what, I love, there are many ways I experience and see God's glory. Right? I love going on hikes and I love uh, admiring the beauty of God's creation in nature. And I find it in other people when I'm talking with them and seeing their, you know, and being able to encounter their, who they are and their heart and their soul. And so I can see God working in a number of ways, but the most important, most essential way the highest way that God works, that God is present to us, is in the Eucharist. It is in his breaking of bread that we are able to receive, that we can take the we can take communion and receive Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity into our very, our very selves. And so right now it's a unique time where we're not able to receive communion right, physically, and so we have to have a spiritual communion. So I hope all the more, and it's a reminder for me, and hopefully it's a reminder for you, that our hearts should long for the day that we can be reconnected in a physical way with the Eucharist. And to never take for granted the Eucharist, that what Jesus has offered. Because without Jesus dying on the cross and rising from the dead, there would be no Eucharist. It would still just be bread. But because of what he did on the cross and what God accomplished on the third day, we are able to receive Jesus into ourselves, to be united with him, unlike any other place or any other, uh, any other way here on earth. And so, my brothers and sisters, I hope that while you read the Walk to Emmaus, you find uh, some solace that Jesus wants to be with you, that Jesus is with you. He is always with you, walking with you in your lives, through the difficulties, through the joys, that he is here in your midst, and he is never departing or walking away from you. He will be with you always. And on a final note, although we may not be able to receive Jesus in the Eucharist in a physical way, take advantage of Eucharistic adoration, right? Find out when your church offers Eucharistic adoration and go and sit before the Blessed Sacrament and uh, adore Him and 
receive him in. Right? Jesus is here. Jesus is present. And he wants to work in our lives. He wants to transform us and configure us more towards him and bring us closer to his most sacred heart. So may you have a blessed Sunday and a blessed week. We are thinking of you and hope that you are doing well and praying for you. May God bless you this day.